Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this wonderful opportunity, privilege we have, gathering together, people coming near and far, Lord, and we count that not just a great compliment to the ministry, Lord, but wonderful fellowship, Lord, and real godly people coming together. We thank you, Lord, for that, young and old, little ones. Some of us past our age you've allotted to us, and here we are together, Lord, in the by the sanctifying grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the great separator, the great sanctifier. How wonderful are your ways, Lord. We just thank you for them. We have not understood too much, Lord. We're looking forward to understanding more. We know you're here in a way you haven't been here for 2,000 years. We know you're here in a way you haven't been for 4,000 years, leading a people, a living people into a promised land, so different, yet so truly the same but even under greater uh, expectations, as the prophet often said, because our expectations are not into a land that will uh, one day pass away from us and we, or we pass off it, but Lord, this land we'll pass into and we will not pass away and the land be renewed and new heavens and new earth. What a wonderful promise we have. And all because a great covenant-making God made this covenant, you and your word being one, you standing in your word, you performing your word, you intervening, Lord, and all these things we marvel and thank you, Lord, for it. We just feel your presence and glorify you. Help us now in our studies. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, in our last study, that's about a couple of weeks ago, on covenants, we began looking into the first, which is really the first and great covenant upon which all covenants are based, <clears throat> and that is the covenant of God, which was given unto us, rather unto the Son, and unto us in the Son, before the very foundation of the world. And uh, actually, that is over here in Ephesians, the first chapter, and is brought to our attention where it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, even to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him and love having predestinated us and so on and so on. <clears throat> then in Hebrews uh, you'll notice what it said there now. This great covenant that Paul is presenting to us and delineating upon is something which is ours as we are and were in Christ Jesus. In other words, the inceptions was way, were way, way back there. <clears throat> and then the materialization conception and manifestation under the present moment that is for the seed all through the ages right coming up from Adam 
Now in Hebrews, the second chapter, 12 and 13, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. You'll notice in there, <clears throat> there is a specific trust uh, placed by Jesus in the Father uh, for uh, what we see in Ephesians here, this great covenant <clears throat> given unto the Son, and it actually refers to us. Now, these two uh, statements that we find here in Hebrews 12 and 13, declaring the name unto the brethren, in the midst of the church singing praise, I'll put my trust in him. And again, behold, I am the children which God hath given me is found in the New Testament in Isaiah 8, <clears throat> 17, and then in Psalms 22 and 22. Now, as we looked into this covenant of the Father and the Son, we read over in Psalms 2 as a basic, and there's actually much more, Psalm 2, 7 and 8, uh, reading, I will de declare the decree, the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, the uttermost parts of, thy, of the earth for thy possession. Actually, you could read verse 6 in there, Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill in Zion. <clears throat> and um, that's just part of it. And over again in Psalms 45, which we read the entire psalm, and we're not going to uh, take time to read it all, <clears throat> but it does speak of the fact of the Son having been covenanted by God to give him a magnificent kingdom, a kingdom which will overthrow all the wickedness which shall be in the earth even at this very hour, and righteousness coming forth in its great moment to fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. In other words, as you look out upon the mass of the water and all you see is water and its various movements and all, the waves and whatever forms there, whatever lies there, you're going to see <clears throat> the glory of the kingdom of God and nothing else will you see. Now, that is something that is entirely foreign to us. You know, it is said by psychologists, and I suppose they're right, I'm not too much of a psychologist, but it is said that <clears throat> we actually should not but do have the uh, ability, <clears throat> propensity, I suppose is a better word, <clears throat> to remember those things that are evil inclined toward us and have been wrongly done perhaps toward us rather than the better. But this will be a time when all memory of that which has been uh, ad adversarial <clears throat> will be removed and just will see the truth of the fact that if God be for us, there will be nothing against us, nothing at all. Now, we made note, and I think I mentioned that a little erroneously that this was written perhaps a thousand years uh, after the foundation of the earth, but it's really about 3,000 years, I guess, after man came upon the earth that these psalms were written, if you've got any faith in Usher, which I don't know that I have too much of. However, <clears throat> we mention also that these two psalms uh, were actually uh, based, not based in, <clears throat> but their principle was shown in Genesis, the third chapter, verse 15, where it mentions the seed of the woman overcoming the seed of the serpent, which, of course, uh, categorizes or set forth that the kingdom <clears throat> that this one will uh, become king over will eventually eradicate entirely anything that has to do with evil. In other words, They'll no longer be of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There'll only be the tree of the knowledge of good, which is life. We also noticed the last time we talked about this, which was really the first time in this covenant, <clears throat> that Isaiah 53 must needs be 
fulfilled and actually is a record, a more voluminous account, detailed account of Genesis 3.15 of the bruising of the heel of the majestic one, then crushing the head of the evil one. <clears throat> now, you can read the whole psalm, which we read, I think, the last time. And then we went over again to Hebrews, <clears throat> the first chapter, where we saw what so many people fail to see and thereby become involved in a Trinitarian gospel instead of understanding the truth. Now, look at what it says in the book of Hebrews. God who at sundry times or in many parts in many ways spake in times past unto the fathers in the prophets. It's a very bad uh, preposition there, by. It's not by, though it is true, it is by, but it is in, in the prophets. Hath in these last days spoken unto us in son. Doesn't even say his son, but in son. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. <clears throat> now, of course, that is the ages, not necessarily all creation, though Colossians tells you that all creation was created by him, and we see that that was because of God, who being the brightness, the effulgence, the outraying of his glory, the express image of his person, that's actually the substance, and upholding all things by the word of his power. <clears throat> now notice what is clipped in here. Actually, we should delete that last phrase, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down in the right hand of majesty on high. That should be absolutely deleted because it's an interpolation <clears throat> explaining the uh, flesh part of this one going into the virgin birth when it would be better left in another situation. See, who being this one, who being the brightness. Now notice he said he has spoken in sun in these last days. And he's taking him back to being the brightness, the effulgence, the outraying of his glory, the expression of his substance, <clears throat> an image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, <clears throat> I'll beat him a father, and he'll beat him a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the inhabited earth, he said, Let all the angels of God worship him. Here again you find an admixture of the pre-existent one back in the former glory spoken of in John 17 and what took place in the earth. But of the angels, he saith, even of angels, he saith, who makes his angels spirits, his ministered frame of fire. <clears throat> but under the sun, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness, is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now, this could well be spoken of <clears throat> at the time Brother Branham mentions that this one was known as Michael, the great archangel. It could even predate that <clears throat> where you go to the extent that he was the cherubim who hovered the mercy seat, which was in type there, and Satan on the other side because the Bible speaks of Satan now was the anointed cherub that covers. And it's certainly true that one would be in opposition to the other in opposition to the other, rather, I should say. One on the other side. So he's going way back <clears throat> to that time of pre-existence which the Trinitarians cannot understand. They just simply can't understand. They even use the words eternal son. As Brother Brandon said, what stupidity. Now, he didn't say that. I said it. He said, how can you make eternal son, he said, when it has a beginning? Even, even if it's the expression of the substance and the literal fullness of the attributes, it is still a beginning. That speaks of sonship. It's like you could take a rock 
You could be a Leonardo da Vinci or whoever. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> Roman or Greek. And be a great sculptor. And you could find a rock which is indubitably, say a marble or a piece of granite, which would be 50 million years old. <clears throat> but as you expose that chunk of marble or granite, preferably marble, easier to work with, <clears throat> by digging it out and laying a chisel on it, you could say that is a beginning because it specifies not the substance <clears throat> but the time of dealing in particular with that substance. So that's what you're looking at. See? Now, and thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands, they shall perish. But thou remainest, they'll all wax old as a garment. As a vesture shalt thou fold them up, they'll be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Now he's talking here, <clears throat> without a doubt, about a covenant. Because he's speaking of the covenanter being in a position whereby nothing can fail. You understand what I'm saying? Now you may think this is tedious and you may have some wonderfully bright ideas as to say, hey, I, I don't think that God was too sharp in what he did. God's never too sharp with a bunch of sharpies like us. We could take him to the cleaners without going to Las Vegas to do it. We're so clever. You see what I'm trying to tell you? I'm giving you scripture as it is written and revealed by a vindicated prophet. Far as I know I am. And it's not too smart. No? You know why? These minds are the enemies of God. You've got to understand that. This mind is an enemy of God. That's why it has to be renewed for transfiguration. Amen. You think anybody would ever get out of here in a rapture immortality <clears throat> without going back to the genuine, suffusing, powerful word of Almighty God, receiving it, believing it, acting and walking in it? There's no way, brother, sister. Let's get that flat. So jar yourselves and say, we're talking about God and the Son of God, period. I may not understand it all, but that's beside the point. Beside the point, I can receive it. That's what counts. <clears throat> Which the angel said, he sit on my right hand to make the enemies thy footstool. Are not the all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? <clears throat> the very hosts of angels are for our benefit. And you know what? They had better worship him or they are not for our benefit. For there are many who would not worship. <clears throat> they transferred their worship to Satan. And believe me, they're out to get us. And if you think wicked spirits aren't around, you are a little bit naive and had better kind of come to the truth. Now, in the second chapter, 7 to 10, it says, Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor to set him over the work of your hands. Now, that, of course, can refer to Adam, <clears throat> but it is referring to Christ in me because Adam threw it, and it's talking of this one who doesn't throw it. He preferred righteousness. He wanted what God said. See? So, therefore, what happens? He's going to be set over all the works. And why not? Ignatic goes on by saying, Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Now you can't refer that to any man. <clears throat> You've got to refer that back to the son. 
Now again, notice, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Now I told you before, cross out the word man. They haven't even got enough sense to put that in italics. It is not in the Greek. It is not in the Bible. It's every. And as you read down, it's son. Because he's talking about sons. Okay. <clears throat> the scripture detailed how this in Genesis 3.15 and Isaiah would be fulfilled. It would be then <clears throat> that this one would eventually become a savior. It's exactly what would happen. And this, by the way, according to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14, according to the prophet, <clears throat> the beginning of the creation of God is where God starts to literally create himself into human flesh. Now that's what you're looking at. There's one God. And we're not Trinitarian. Don't ever think so, because it's not true. <clears throat> we can see from the scripture, through revelation, exactly what the covenant contained. The con covenant contained the promise of exaltation over all what lay within God to be materialized, placed in the hands of the Son, of which we were the integral, prized part. Because we're sons of God. Not as this one. No. But nonetheless sons. The Hebrews understood this. <clears throat> they understood only too well that according to the birthright, the first son, and indicated by God, because Esau missed it, Jacob did not, Ishmael couldn't have it, only Isaac could. <clears throat> As was in Adam, showed a co-equality with the Father. And so the Jews said, you make yourself equal to God, claiming you are the Son of God. So, <clears throat> we see here then that the firstborn, which was Jesus, later to come into flesh, as Brother Brown spoke concerning Melchizedek and Jesus, threw us a couple of stingers, <clears throat> said no way was Jesus Melchizedek. Right, turned right around and said he was. And if you didn't get the understanding what he was talking about, <clears throat> you'll never get anywhere. Because there is one God. No more than one. And God has always chosen a way of manifesting. And here's where you begin to find God manifesting, setting the place in order to come right on down to the place <clears throat> where he could literally be a sacrifice. Now, at this time, it is good to again note that this covenant, like the others, was solely and wholly founded in God and that the covenant partner chosen by God was free to receive or reject it. But in spite of what <clears throat> Brother Branham called, and it's true, the free moral agency, and that's what we all have from Adam on downward, even Christ, we also note that these vessels of the covenants were formed in order to receive the covenants, which they invariably did, as seen in Romans 9, and fulfilled the purpose and of the plan of God, and yet even their own living or their own lives more perfectly. Now, <clears throat> what I said, I want to let you know again. Even though there is a free moral agency, the vessels to whom God extends the covenant, 
<clears throat> and those who receive the covenant, <clears throat> though free to make a choice, do make the choice. They make the choice because they are fitted to it. Romans, the ninth chapter, tells you that and you cannot change it. <clears throat> See? Because he says in verse 21, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, another unto dishonor? What if God willing to show his wrath, to make his power known, endured with much love suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, that he might make known the vessels of his glory, the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. <clears throat> now, in the Greek, it is true that the vessels prepared for wrath literally prepared themselves. But when it comes to the vessels of mercy, it is absolutely categorically true that God prepared them. You can say what you want. <clears throat> there again, the human mind figures there's injustice with God. And Paul caught them, knowing they would say this is unjust. He said, then <clears throat> man would say, why is God angry? What's the matter with God? <clears throat> he said, nay, but oh man, who are you to reply against God? See, that's what counts in this hour, is to not reply against God or do question, <clears throat> but is to sit and assimilate the knowledge. Now, we're at the end time, harvest time. Just talking to Gene out there in the fellowship hall before service, <clears throat> talking about the fact that some of the corn looks nice and brown. Well, he said, you know, we got this frost while some of the corn was green. <clears throat> What's going to happen is that the kernels are going to go black. <clears throat> the corn's going to be shot for those that didn't get it in in time. And the frost being extensive. So sitting here tonight, looking at the flowers and those dahlias, they're the ones that <clears throat> are very juicy. They're full of moisture. They're full of water like the canna lilies, beans, tomatoes. Cha -chum, frost gets them like that. <clears throat> you see, they're too green, and they can't stand the frost. Brother Branham said, at the end time, we're too green. We got to sit in the presence of the sun. And remember, <clears throat> the presence of the sun that we sit in is the word. Because Logos and Rima are the same. I don't want to be vitriolic all the time, but I am, so that takes care of it. But I can't stand this bird brain out of Chicago that tries to tell you to separate Rima and Logos. You know why he does it? <clears throat> because he's false. That's what you tell you the truth. The truth isn't any. And if you want to like him, that's fine. You like him. I got news for you. A man in his word is the same thing. The man in his message is one. Yeah. Now, if you want to get real technical, go back to where they get the message. So I hate the man that killed my son. <clears throat> well, why don't you hate the devil? Because the devil's behind it. What about the man that kills your soul because you listen? Say, so, well, just a minute now. <clears throat> I'll go back and hate the devil. I want to ask you one question. Who's behind the man that's killing your soul? Don't be stupid, brother, sister. I'm not accusing. I'm just warning you. Lie in the presence of the sun. All right. <clears throat> Once again, we see Brother Bram correct in his assessment of Matthew 5:48. <clears throat> Where it said, be ye perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven. And he said, seeing God <clears throat> commanded it, then God must make a way for it. And I see God making a way for the consummation deliberately, the deliberate, purposeful 
consummation of his covenant which he gave to Christ and which we have in Christ and coming to full fruition. God makes a way for it. So we see Hebrews 1 to 3, which we've already read, taking us <coughs> to Hebrews 10 and 7. Then said I, lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. <clears throat> Therefore, before there was a manifestation, or there would be a hint of it, <clears throat> I would be led to believe that there was a foreknowledge and a record. Now, I'm going to tell you something, which you already know. You know I'm thinking thoughts. But you don't know my thoughts until I tell them. And that's not too incriminating because <clears throat> I could say, well, you misunderstood me. So God puts himself on the spot. He writes it all out. <clears throat> now the covenant maker with the one who's within the covenant says there is a record of this. And he said to the scribes and Pharisees, <clears throat> he said, search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life, which is true, it's in there. And they are they which testify of me. Now he said it's written. And here it is. <clears throat> the perfect vessel, perfectly filled and perfectly fulfilling being the word. You hear what I said? <clears throat> this is the perfect fulfillment. In the volume <clears throat> of the book, <clears throat> it is written to me, I come to do thy will, O God, exactly what it is written. Now, this, of course, is concerning Isaiah 53. And whatsoever pertaineth to the flesh, which flesh was there for redemption? Right? Now that's the understanding. It's got to be redemption and only the flesh can do it because the life of the flesh is the blood. <clears throat> and the blood is the atonement for the sin and the sin is done in the flesh and by the flesh. All right. In the volume of the book, it is written to me, I come to do thy will, O God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians then, <clears throat> the fifth chapter. And specifically notice, <clears throat> the record of the flesh. Let's start at verse 14. For the love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge if one died for all, then we're all dead. <clears throat> That's right. In Adam we all die, in Christ all may lie. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Now that sounds pretty good because that's a pastoral message. <clears throat> but when you want the doctrine, you eliminate certain phraseology. <clears throat> you bypass it in order to get your passive faith. In other words, to know where you stand by grace, not by works. <clears throat> okay, one died for all. Now let's go down to verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Verse 19, to wit, that God was in Christ. <clears throat> Then if he was in Christ two years back, 2,000 years, <coughs> or 1 A.D., <coughs> in the consummation of this, where was he relative to Christ before that? Well, the answer is obvious. All things were made by God <coughs> 
all creation. And then it says he created all things by Christ Jesus. <clears throat> then where was God? You know, I've got two gods. <clears throat> you got a perfect picture of God in Christ. And Christ being the anointing. And God in that. Now, it's the very same thing we see over here now in Philippians, <clears throat> the second chapter. The same thing you see in Roman, I mean, rather Hebrews 1 to 3, 1 to, first, first chapter 1, 1 to 3, 1 to 4. Speaking, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not a prize to be grasped and retained, <clears throat> to be equal with God. <clears throat> now remember, equality with God is sonship. The Jews knew it. Why well, he said, you make yourself the son of God, you're equal with God. They understood birthright. <clears throat> okay. Now remember, a covenant was laid down. <clears throat> the covenant was not sit thou on my right hand, period. It was till I make thine enemies thy footstool. The covenant was, according to character, you would love righteousness and hate iniquity. <clears throat> according to manifestation, you will come and die for the brethren. So what's he doing? He's laying aside sonship, <clears throat> laying aside his equality. Now, let's face it. <clears throat> In the realm of the Spirit, his name was the same as the name on the fathers of the fathers on the chick. He puts this aside. But he doesn't put aside the understanding that it is God in me who's doing the talking and God in me who's doing the work. But he laid aside the glory <clears throat> and perhaps whatever counseling there was. And now it's all in the Father's hand. And now, and being made himself a reputation, he, he emptied it all out and took upon himself the form of a servant was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion of man, he humbled himself, became a beating death, even the death of the cross. <clears throat> that is exactly the account of Hebrews chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 2, because you can't change the word. How could Paul say, I, I had a revelation out there in the desert, bless God. Pillar of fire came down and God talked face to face to me. And he said, I want to tell you, Philippians, I'm going to pull a little trick. I'm going to give a revelation to you, and I'm going to give a different one to the Hebrews. How ridiculous can you get? Search the scripture. Then from Genesis right to Malachi, <clears throat> the sixth chapter and the last verse, it's the same one with no change. You might say also from Matthew 1 <clears throat> to Revelation chapter 22, what is it, verse 22 or 4, 24, whatever it is, 24 verse ends out there. It's the same one again. <clears throat> you can't change it. Now listen, let's keep continuing. Verse 9, Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, gave him name above every name, name of Jesus every knee should bow, everything right on down the line. Now listen, then it comes to you and me. As the children of God, <clears throat> whom God hath given him, that were in him, and are now redeemed. Listen to it. Wherefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. You see, you've got a moral choice there. Watch. For it's God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You tell me a difference between us and Christ? <clears throat> there is not a difference. Except to the degree of the heightening of the perception. And we don't have a prayer in that, brother, sister. Our perception could never be the same as his. But in this last day, we come the closest to the perception. We also went into types of Genesis 22 on this same subject last Sunday, Sunday before last. <clears throat> there we saw God demanding a foreknown named and elect and predestinated son of man. That's where God said to Abraham, 
take now thy son, thine only son. And yet he had another son and would have seven sons more. <clears throat> take now thine only son. His name was Isaac. So now remember, he said, you're going to call his name Isaac. He was foreknown and named foreknown. Named according to foreknowledge and predestinated. There we saw God demanding a foreknown and named and elect and predestinated son of man. Because Isaac was the son of man. He was the son of Abraham. And then providing a sacrifice, even as he would through Jesus, <clears throat> the virgin-born son of God. So we see a perfect type in Genesis 22. Then in Exodus 6, 1 to 8, we better read it. Now we're talking about this great covenant, <clears throat> the great and first covenant, <clears throat> the father of the son, and part of what is involved in it, which appreciably is the children. <clears throat> All was in the divorce. Who gets the kids? Sometimes nobody wants them. I can understand that. <clears throat> but in this one, there's no divorce. What's going to happen to the family of God? Then the Lord said to Moses, thou, thou, Now thou shalt see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. With a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. God spake unto Moses, said to him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But mine, my name Jehovah was I not known to them. <clears throat> I've also established my coming with them to give them the land of Canaan. The land of the pilgrimage when they were strangers. Now notice this is a living people going into a living land. And they're going to be farmers, agrarian. <clears throat> no more building houses out of bricks and this and that and the other thing. Now, sir, they won't manufacture bricks or cut down timbers. Take rock and things. I've heard the growing of the children of Israel, and whom the Egyptians kept in bondage, keep in bondage. I remember that covenant. Wherefore, said the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I'll bring you up from under the burden of the Egyptians. I'll rid you of their bondage. I'll redeem you with a stretched out arm <clears throat> and with great judgments. God's going to manifest himself. I'll take you to, for, to, be, for, to me to be a people. I'll be to you a God. Now notice, he's going to take them to be a people before they even know it. Then they're going to know him as God. And you should know I'm the Lord your God, which brings you up on the burden of the Egyptians. Now remember, that's Jehovah Elohim. And I'll bring you to the land concerning the which I swear to give to Abraham to Isaac, Jacob, and be for inheritance for the Lord. I am the Lord. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Notice here, and this is a type, father and son, a covenant. In Exodus 6, 1 to 8, we find Jehovah bringing his son. Israel is my son. Bringing his son up out of Egypt to make him the great name and king over all nations in a promised land where to all other nations might come with their possessions and worship. <clears throat> you get the picture. The same thing you're seeing today. The absolutism of the entire bride of Christ coming into the millennium. <clears throat> but more particularly, the designation in this hour of Exodus that a living people will go into a living land under a God who reveals himself <clears throat> as Elohim Jehovah where the people will get their possessions going plumb into the new heavens and earth. Now at that time, Exodus, God revealed himself as Jehovah to Moses 
<coughs> Elohim is now Jehovah. He never specifically at that time revealed himself as to any compound title <coughs> of what lay in him, of which there are eight. And of which the very strange thing is that everybody, even Brother Branham, speaks of seven compound titles when there are eight. There are. <coughs> and the one they missed <clears throat> is Jehovah Sanctifier. Which is the word. And that's for this hour. The separation is the word. <clears throat> Jehovah separated the people by the word. For he said, going into this nation, you are a word revealed people that makes you different from all the others. I ask you a question, does it or doesn't it? Yet many people cannot understand Brother Branham giving this great message and this great word. They toy with it. <clears throat> and use it for their two souls and their polygamies and their adulteries. Well, you better not be caught that way, brother, sister. Of course, I'm not going to ride hurting you. If this pulpit's where it ends, you do what you want. <clears throat> he never specifically revealed the Jehovah complex. But listen, after leaving Egypt, and with the final separation from the Egyptians by the Red Sea opening up <clears throat> and letting God's Son pass through. Because it's one Son, not a bunch. <clears throat> Let them get absolutely away. They go into a desert and face drought for lack of water only to come to Mara, a fountain of bitterness, bitter water. <clears throat> this is exactly like Revelation 10, 1 to 7. The mighty one coming down with the seven thunders, giving us the opening of the seven seals, <clears throat> only to confront us, as did John, who knew what was said, but forbidden to write it. Now, after knowing what was said, listen, because John will stand there as verse 7, not William Branham. John will prefigure him. <clears throat> Although John was not a prophet, he was a scribe. <clears throat> this is not a man with the prophet's message. This is a scribe. Jesus was his own prophet. <clears throat> now watch in verse 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spoke unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which stands upon the sea and the earth. And I went to the angel and said, Give me the little book. And he said, Take it and you eat it up. It will make thy belly bitter. It will be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. <clears throat> it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I did, it, was bit, be, my belly was bitter. <clears throat> and he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. <clears throat> In other words, before it ran the course, the sweet escape from Egypt, based on the word of God, <clears throat> turns into the bitter concept of whether you can take this word and love it Oh, it's very sweet to think about a prophet, to think about Malachi, to think about a great healing ministry, a great God doing something. But let me tell you something. When you come to this word, it'll be bitter to you because it's fully contrary to what you ever were taught. And anybody tries to tell you that he had the truth, 
<clears throat> like this guy from India said, he said, why? He said, you Americans, he said, you needed the Bible. We in India never lost it. I heard him preach sermons, and he used maybe two scripture, and I'd get right behind the guy and get as many as 200, not trying to boast. But he didn't have a first thing in the Word. He just thought he did. That's why he blew it. <clears throat> he couldn't take what the Word said. See, it was sweet to talk it. It's sweet to gabble and garble it. But to get down to the truth, it's a bitterness. It's a bitter thing. It's like the bitter <clears throat> bread. Now, what is the bitter bread? I'll tell you what the bitter bread is. <clears throat> it's Hebrews 6. Leaving the principles and everything else. <clears throat> Coming to the place where, you know, every table is full of vomit. <clears throat> where every doctrine is polluted. And where men do not know the secrets of the book of Revelation, which must be known. Or you can add or take from it inadvertently. Now it says here, let's go to perfection. <clears throat> Paul couldn't do it. He said, we'll do it if God permits, but God didn't permit. For it is impossible for those who are once for all enlightened. Tasted the heavenly gift. Partake of the Holy Ghost. Taste the good word of God. The powers of the world to come. Having fallen away, they can never be renewed to repentance. Seeing they crucified themselves, the Son of God afresh, <clears throat> and put him in open shame. See, that takes place right at that very time. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that come oft upon it, seven church ages, seven messages, the end time seven complete messages. They bring it forth herbs, meat for them, but whom is dressed received blessing from God. <clears throat> but that which bears thorns and briars rejected, and nigh to cursings, then to be burned. What couldn't they do? The word of the message became bitter to them. <clears throat> they couldn't take it. Now let's get this understanding and get it flat. I don't care what anybody says. William Branham's family, his relatives, his closest friends would try to tell you that the voice from heaven, when the pillar of fire came down, spoke to William Branham and said, as John the Baptist foreran the first coming, he said categorically, so your message will run the second coming because I talked to Brother Branham. Because he said, Lee, you're introducing me wrong. It's neither me nor my ministry. It is my message. That's what he's saying, Brother Branham. What he said, what he told me that day when he came down was, <clears throat> he said, as John the Baptist foreran the first coming, so your message foreruns the second coming. I said, hold it. You're telling me it's John the Baptist. Nobody but John the Baptist. Name John the Baptist. Because Zachariah was told, name him John by God. Nobody but John could forerun. That's right. But I said, in your case, it's not a matter of William Branham, John Doe, or Bill Buck or somebody else. It's a message that does it. He said, you've got it exactly right. Now you do what you want. And this tape goes around the world. It embraced a lot of it. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham categorically said, my ministry is to declare that he is here and his ministry was a message. Then the presence is what counts. Amen. And it's bitter. They can't take it. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Talk all you want about the Word. When it gets right down to the fact, is that a supernatural picture? Is that literally that light caught by the camera authenticated as supernatural? <clears throat> by the smartest man in America at that time, George G. Lacey, head of the FBI documentation, photography, and what have you. <clears throat> is it the truth that that light is the pillar of fire, which if the pillar of fire is not God, but designates the presence of God. It's the Shekinah, which means the glory attendant upon the personal presence of God. Or are you settling tonight because you think you've got some of God in your heart? Hogwash. You insufferable, egotistical, moronic person. I'm ashamed if that's all you know. 
You're so wrong. That is not the God in you, brother, sister. You have the life of that God in you. Any more than you are your father's here. You talk about vulgarity. <clears throat> we see too much of it. So we read Exodus 15. And as usual, never ever get finished anything. Except we're in no rush anyway. I can start again on Wednesday night. 22 to 26. Now listen. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name was called Mara. And the people of Mormon, Mormon said, What do we drink? And he showed and the Lord cried the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast in the water, he had to cut it down first, that's the sign of the cross, the waters were made sweet. <clears throat> For there he made them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, will give ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes, all his statutes, I'll put none of these diseases upon you, which I brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth. I am Jehovah Rapha. <clears throat> I am Jehovah Healer. Now listen, he said, you will go into that land disease-free. And the Son of Righteousness arises at the end time as Jehovah Rapha, healing in his wings, which is immortality. <clears throat> so there you see the covenant being manifested. And the covenant was of God in Christ. And remember, the prime movers of the covenant have to do with you and me or there would be no movers. That's exactly why you see God and Satan as adversaries of each other because they are looking at God's children, both of them. And God has bound himself by a covenant that these will come in. <clears throat> you can see the adversarial situation here. Now, notice 25 and 26. The Lord cried, they cried the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. <clears throat> now Moses, the prophet of the Exodus, cried unto God <clears throat> for the condition that Israel was in. <clears throat> now, what did God do? He brought a healing of the waters to the people. And the water is the word. Now, not only that, brother, sister, remember this. There is no true healing revival unless there is a new message. So here we see Jehovah Rapha, whether you want to believe it or not. <clears throat> you see him <clears throat> come down, send his own personal angel in 1946 to Brother Branham, and say, I have been sent from the presence of God to indicate to you and tell you that you have a gift of healing to take to the world. And he took it to the world as Moses went down into Egypt. But only the true Israelites heard and came forth to go into a land healed. And so there'll be a bride come out of Egypt. Under Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord that healeth thee. For the son of righteousness will he rise with healing in his wings before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Because why? God will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. Now look at Exodus 15 and 27. They came to Elam. <clears throat> there were 12 wells of water, three score and ten palm trees, and there they camped by the waters. Now what does that tell us? Here is Psalm 1. <clears throat> Let's go back to Psalm 1. And see what we're coming into because Brother Branham used Psalm 1 as concerning this hour and what lay to us. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, come out of Egypt, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Gets out of his stupid, rotten organizations. But his delight is in the word of the Lord, and in that word doth he meditate day and night, sitting in the presence of God. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. 
<clears throat> the rivers that have flowed for seven solid church ages merge into one head. With the seven thunders <clears throat> and the seven seals. Planted by the river of truth of life. Brings forth his fruit in his season. What's the fruit of our season? Immortality. The leaf shall not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. You hear what he said? You can't flunk this one. You get so far, <clears throat> you're like a man <clears throat> that has gone past the perpendicular. And there's no way he can recover himself. He's over the precipice. In plain English, you have turned the corner. You are no longer sitting on the fence. It is live or die, sink or swim. You know what? Makes you a pretty tough gambler, doesn't it? You talk about old dead eye. Turn the cards over. He doesn't care about you. He's going to skunk you 10 to 1. Because he's a skunker. Not a skunk, but a skunker. You can look the devil in the eye tonight. And say, Brother Brandon, we know why he's roaring, because we know all about him. He's been discovered to us. I could go further, but I won't. The ungodly are not so, <clears throat> but like the chaff, <clears throat> which the wind blows away. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, where they come to the place where no slight of doctrine ever turns them. Because the body of Christ has come together as one. God calling his son out of Babylon. All the children taught of God. Not one who is not in this place. The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. We have stood. Been declared the righteous bride. <clears throat> Nor sinners in the congregation the righteous. Why? Because he hates unrighteousness and loves righteousness. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, <clears throat> but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You see, that's the works program. You're lying right there. It's not a works program. We know God's way. It's covenant. We know God's way. It's foreknowledge. It's election. It's predestination. It's consummation. We know the plan and the perfections of God. We know that to be true. <clears throat> now, notice again. We said here here. In 15 of Exodus, we were looking where they, where they got this revelation of the great Jehovah of the, of, of the Exodus. 15 and 27, they came to Elam, 12 wells of water, three score and ten psalm, palms. We read about, the, about, the, about the, the, the palms, the great trees planted by the water. Now, <clears throat> let's go to the psalm number two, falling right in line. <clears throat> 7, 8, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, I'll give thee heathen for thine inheritance. The uttermost parts of the earth are going to be yours as your possession. <clears throat> so we're coming into that land. What land is that? The great land past the millennium right into eternity. It stands for us. The bride has come through Revelation 2, 18 to 28. <clears throat> She's already come through it. That is the fourth church age. The tough age. The rough age. The age of darkness. The age of blackness. She's come right through it. I won't read it. You got it there before you. She has come to Revelation 18, 1 to 4. She's come out of her Babylon, starting back in the days of Luther, but more particularly now. 
she has passed and come to the place of Matthew 12, where the Lord has appeared among her with his signs and wonders, risen from the dead and done in the spirit what he's done in the flesh and done exceedingly more so. Through that we have come to Ephesians 1, 17 to 23, <clears throat> the great revelation of his presence, the knowledge of him as Rima and Logos, waiting for what was perpetrated upon him as part of his covenant which he bequeathed to us. We shall not either have in our bodies corruption. We shall not die, but be taken away in a mighty and tremendous resurrection. Now listen, except for Revelation 18 and 4, which has come out of her, my people, and Matthew 26 and 25, <clears throat> which is, Behold, the bridegroom. In Revelation 3 and 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, which is Songs of Solomon 5, 1 to 4, there is no way for the name of Jehovah to be revealed. Now let's go to the Songs of Solomon, chapter 5. How many minutes we got left? Well, what we're going to do is just stop it off right here. <clears throat> because this is as good as any place to stop because I wouldn't know any place else to stop anyway. The notes are all a jumble, just continuously going. All right, listen. I am come into my garden, my sister and my spouse. Notice that. That's just like... You notice... Abraham married his half-sister. I've gathered my myrrh with my spice. I've eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I've drunk my wine with my milk. Yea, O oh, eat, O oh, friends. Drink, yea, drink abundantly, O oh, beloved. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, for my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. I put off my coat. How shall I put it on? I've washed my feet. How shall I defile them? My beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved toward him. <clears throat> now, there's no way to get there without what we are looking at, which we are seeing here is a revelation of the marriage. It's the revelation of her make the revealed word, which we are looking at in the Songs of Solomon, <clears throat> and the pillar of fire is being defined by himself to her at this particular moment. So what we're looking at then is found over here in 1 Corinthians, <clears throat> the 13th chapter and the 12th verse. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am also known. In other words, you see God unveiling himself to his bride where perfection has come. The same as in the songs of Solomon. Now remember, he foreknew and knew and knows the bride. The foreknowledge is back there when he was. He knew which is over all the ages. And he knows which is present. But she has to know him. And this is the exodus time of Matthew 25 is what we're looking at. Now, you know Matthew 25 is the five foodies, virgin, the five wise, and they some come out to meet him, and they consort with him, and they go into the wedding supper, and the rest go into the tribulation. All right, now, let's not hurry, but let's go back at this time to Exodus 15. <clears throat> now, the whole thing is lining up for us in this great covenant because you got to see <clears throat> it is met as well as you can. Exodus 15, 1 to 21. And Moses had sang, and the children of Israel this, this sang this song, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he overthrown the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I'll prepare him in habitation. My Father's God, I'll exalt him. Now, how are you going to prepare a habitation? That's a, that's a pretty big statement. Well, the habitation is going on now because, you see, there's no temple. But you're looking past the millennium. You see, there's no, it's, it's 
in the millennium there is a habitation there is a, is a point right there <clears throat> but down the road it's all one the Lord is a man of war. The Lord, the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots, his host is he cast the sea. His chosen captains did drown the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank the bottom as a stone. Their right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Their right hand, O Lord, had dashed the enemy in pieces and enemy in the greatness of thine excellence. Thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sent them forth thy wrath, which consumed the stubble. Now that's what happened then. That's going to happen in the great tribulation. With the blast thy nostril, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood up to right as a flood, as a heap, the depths were con congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I'll pursue, I'll overtake, I'll divide and spoil, my lust shall be satisfied upon them, I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a good picture after the white throne where Satan tries to destroy the bride and God's people. Yeah, then they never learn. After even <clears throat> the resurrection, the white throne, <clears throat> the wicked don't learn. You can't show them anything. See? Now, thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them, they sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, Lord, amongst the, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, doing wonders? Thou stretched out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people, but thou hast redeemed. Thou guides them with thy strength unto the holy habitation. The people shall hear and shall be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold upon the hands of Palestina. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan and Melody, that's the great tribulation, Christ coming back and destroying. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm. They shall be as still as a stone to those people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. There come, that's the bride coming back. They're going to be out of here. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine, in thine inheritance in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. You're getting right back to the millennium and then pass to the great, to the, um, to the uh, future home. The Lord shall reign over forever and ever. For the horse of Pharaoh went in his, in, in, in with, for the horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen in the sea. The Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them, but the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea, and Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timber in hand, and all the women went out after her timbers with dances. And Miriam said unto them, Sing ye unto the Lord, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider were thrown into <clears throat> the sea. All right. Now, notice in verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went to the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness, and they found no water. And now you're back again to 27. They came to Elam, where there were 12 wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and there they encamped by the water. So what you're looking at here now is the covenant of the end time. <clears throat> God <clears throat> has taken the people out of Egypt. <clears throat> Today, taken the people out of, out of the Babylon, revealed himself as the great healer, and is preparing us now to go into the millennium, and from there going right into the uh, new Jerusalem, <clears throat> which God had prepared the new heavens and the new earth. So, all right. In the third chapter of Malachi, who may abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appears? He is like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. Now, who is going to stand in the day of the exodus? There's nobody is going to be able to do it except those who are fully qualified by God himself at the end time in this particular hour. <clears throat> All right? Let's go back to Romans, the 8th chapter. Notice in verse 19, For the earnest expectation of creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. You're coming to it. For the earnest expectation of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That takes place, the fullness and the resurrection. For a creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, by reason him subject to the same in hope. And right on down the line, it's mentioned here to the very extent that we are going to have a glorified and resurrected body and creation is going to be completely restored. Okay, what are you looking at? <clears throat> You're looking over here in the book of Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and new earth and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from God, him prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, what was the covenant? <clears throat> what was the covenant? The covenant was with the Father and the Son. The only begotten. And as he said to Israel, only begotten means I am a son of which there is no other kind. He did not say there weren't other sons. 
but he said there was no other kind. And when he said he was the son of God, the Jews said he makes himself equal with God because he said he's the son. When Jesus rose in the resurrection, he said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Brother Branham said when he stood upon Mount Transfiguration, the voice said, this is my beloved son and whom I'm pleased to dwell. He said, this is the adoption. His name is on the check, the same as his father. It's just as good because he has proved himself and proved. What did he do? He did it for you and me. You and I do not bear the brunt of proof. You and I bear the brunt of faith. As Abraham who knew it, and he said, God's got to raise the dead. God calls those things which are not as though they were. And then David writer turned right around and said, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute iniquity. He didn't say, Blessed is the man that doesn't do it. He said, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute it. So, brother, sister, you see this great and mighty covenant. And what I'm trying to show you is this. No matter how many covenants you and I talked about, which we talked about in the Word here, <clears throat> no many, how many we enter into, we do not enter into it by our own volition, even though the volition is required of us. If you weren't of that category, if you didn't have representation then, you don't have it now. If you weren't in him, you aren't in him now. If you weren't in the book then, you aren't in the book now. It is something which we're looking at here is the recognition is what we're looking at. It's not something you and I do, although we'll do it. It's not something you and I ask for, though we ask for it. <clears throat> it is not something that you and I, in other words, originate, but it is something of which we catch a glimpse through revelation and identify. Now, we're doing the same thing right today with identification. Jehovah Rufa. You know, brother, sister, there's not one thing that you and I need at this moment outside of healing. You say, Brother Vale, I need some money. You know, you are kooky. You don't need money. You need the strength to go and work to get the money. Man is supposed to work <clears throat> and live by the sweat of his brow. Literally from the time he's born till the time he dies. And we haven't got enough strength to get up in the morning to go to work. Everybody's tired. There's a few health nuts that seem to be making it. But even Rock Hudson, whose muscles rippled. That's what I just read about him. I get people's magazine <clears throat> that said the 80s, <clears throat> 85, Rock Hudson, nobody knew what he's into. Yeah, died of AIDS. Homosexual pervert. A sodomite. Disgusting filth. You say, Brother Vale, you're not nice. I'll ask you a question again. Somebody kills your son. Do you really know that man killed him? Say, sure, I saw him kill my son. Well, the devil made him do it. Who is he identified with? The sodomite is not identified with God. My Bible tells me they all burn in the lake of fire. My Bible tells me the wrath of God comes upon this earth because of them. What does your Bible tell you? Now, you people, you all had a little bit, some of you get a little bit to know these judges and these prosecutors and these whoremongers that are in the office. <coughs> They're the ones that God's going to judge the most of all because they pass sentences against the Word of God. <coughs> Where do you stand today in your faith with the prophet's word? That's my question. <coughs> are you in the original covenant? This is what the prophet taught, the original covenant. We can preach a thousand covenants, show a thousand things, whichever, it doesn't matter. But the point is, where do we stand today with this covenant? Do we see it? <clears throat> All the world, the legalists can't see it. A few Calvinists can. But I'm going to tell you, the Branhamites, 
which in plain English are the Christites, if you really want to know the truth, which are the true disciples of the one who rose from the dead and made himself known. What was, it the, what was it the voice said to Brother Branham when those rainbows appeared? Jehovah of the Old Testament is the Jesus of the New. Where was that revelation after the signs and wonders made? Down there as they came out of Egypt. There is one God. And baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is the great revelation of this hour. The great covenant God made, and we'll talk about more on Wednesday night. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you again for giving us the opportunity, Lord, to talk these things over with your people, to bring them out, Lord, right in the open here before us all concerning the great covenant. <clears throat> we know, Lord, somehow you're doing it. We know, Lord, a little bit, a little bit more and more as time goes on. And if we never learn more than this, we're satisfied with it because we know that this is that great covenant where all other things rest. And we see the perfection of it because as this covenant was of God and in Christ Jesus, so shall the disposition of it be. And we know that you stand behind your word to perform it. Not only so, but you absolutely intervene, interjecting yourself standing right there and like that great Passover bring your people out under the blood you're bringing us out this day Lord we know and we say with brother Branham if we're not bride there's a bride out there somewhere and by the grace of God we'll not stand in the way we couldn't anyway but we're here Lord to stand with the truth the best we can at least in the sense of the understanding what is truth we're willing to listen and be bathed in the waters of separation. Every blemish removed, glorious within and without, until presentation is finally made. We thank you for this help you gave us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to go to the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> Before we take the communion, the table of the Lord, and it says in the ninth chapter, but verse 11, but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that's to say not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in, in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. <clears throat> now notice it's eternal redemption. In other words, it's a redemption that didn't have a beginning and didn't have an end. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and ashes of the heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, <clears throat> which means you got off. It's not held against you, though you did it. Like David, the all are sinners and come short of the glory of God. But if the blood of bulls and goats could take care of that, it says, how much more shall the blood of Christ take care of all of this through the eternal, who through the, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God? Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. In other words, <clears throat> there is a knowledge that we are the children of God that we are those living epistles read and known of all men. And we have through the substantial offering of the blood of Christ the ability to line ourselves with the entire word of God in the face of the problems we have with our flesh. As I say, to align ourselves with 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, which we read a while ago, <clears throat> telling us that we have been reconciled by God in Christ. 
And in verse 21 now says, For he hath made him to be a sin offering for us, he who knew no sin. Christ became their propitiation. That we might be made, which again is the word become, the righteousness of God in him. <clears throat> this statement is a staggering statement. And again, the human mind in its folly of believing that it is a mark of humility makes God a liar. Once more, you find the mark of humility is a lie. It's far worse than the poor Amish and Mennonites who make black hats and call it God. A little frilly thing for a woman's head and call it God. Or the Seventh day Adventist making Saturday something which it isn't, the true Sabbath, which is the Holy Ghost. So now they make Saturday the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> what criminal pride, as in Satan, who fell by reason of pride, lies in these organizations and in all the word apart from the truth we have today. For if anybody should know the truth, we who follow a prophet's message, which was vindicated, ought to know the truth that Christ is our righteousness. And Christ in us proves that we are the righteousness of God, which is the rightness of God. By the very fact that we are born again proves it. And the proof of the born again is the fact that we believe the word which nobody else believes. You know what? Moses stood there as one leader. <clears throat> His own foolish sister who was a prophetess after a specific order of being able to prophesy rose up against him as though she had a previous recognition from God and therefore outnumbered her brother. Then three men had the audacity to catch her spirit and rise up. So you got four. But Moses stood there. What I'm trying to tell you is this. A lot of people rise up in this message and try to make themselves something. But you know what? Many men sat in his presence. But no man saw what I saw twice. See, you're boasting. Call it what you want. I'll call your bluff very shortly. That's right. I'll call your bluff very shortly. Because we'll come up in the same resurrection. Or at least the white throne. They never saw what this man really was. Twice I knew what God did in his life. No man ever caught it. We were that close. Let me tell you something. You listen to the man with the pillar of fire. If I'm off of his word, leave me. You know why? I don't want responsibility for him. Bad enough to be wrong without leading somebody astray. <clears throat> the blood of the everlasting covenant, which is an eternal one in God, transcends all ages but is brought to the ages make you perfect. As Brother Brandon said, the blood perfects the brand. If the blood of bulls and goats could satisfy God as to what a man did in his life as a sinner in a mortal body, what will this blood do for us? It will sanction the covenant. 
that God in Christ had with Christ <clears throat> concerning us. So what am I saying? Tonight as you partake, you're looking at the emblems of an everlasting covenant which was ratified completely by blood so that whether we are Davids who sin in the extreme and David did not fall very far short of Satan in what he did when he took another man's wife and then killed the husband. He wasn't very far short. <clears throat> and he said, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. He said, David, you will pay for it. And we pay for ours because we're going to die. The spirit is life, but the body is dead because of sin. But the blood of the everlasting covenant which we celebrate tonight we will drink with him in the millennium and I don't know that it says after the millennium we discontinue I don't know it says that so I'm not going to say it neither will I say it. but I can say this tonight there are those who have taught the people to withhold the communion. That is a lie. Amen. I mean, it's a very big lie. There are some who say, I believe in the presence. And therefore, we don't have to do it. That is a lie. Amen. You will do it tonight in recognition of the first and great covenant which is spoken of in the Psalms, in the prophets, exposed by revelation in the New Testament. And you begin to realize that Isaiah 53 was a prophetic account of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. We do that tonight. How much are we cleansed? To go where no man has ever gone. Mm -mm. No. So what about Noah? I mean, I'd rather Enoch and Elijah. <clears throat> I don't count them in this particular way. <clears throat> Not even Jesus could do it. He died for us. But now, like Adam, back to the border, the tree of life in view, to go to the tree of life. Now listen, knowing at that time, as we stand here on earth, all without our dogs, homosexuals, your churches fornicating spiritual sexual filth with organization, dogs, whoremongers, liars, <coughs> sorcerers, who makes and loves a lie. Not the bride. All glorious within and without. Clear as the moon, as fair as the sun, terrible like an arm with banners, everyone in his own place. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's rise at this time. <clears throat> Ask the brethren to come forward to serve. <clears throat> Those who are going to play. Take care of the song service. And you know how we come from the back around the side. And